Welcome to another ABS online video. Let's go and find out what we're going to learn today. Going like a bullet in 25. Our winter sport this week is one of the fastest in the world. Wow, well, can it be that fast? It can be really expensive as well. Hmm, so very, very, very fast, very expensive. What could it be? Oh, now this is a bit of a problem. It's got two names. They're very similar though. We're going to look at bobsleigh or bobsled. They are very similar. There we are. So it's super fast. And that small car looking thing is the bobsleigh. Hmm. Which word should we use? Well, maybe I'll keep changing them so that you can understand they're both okay. Some sports are ancient. But the bobsled wasn't invented until 1890. It must have been very simple then. Maybe just a little wooden tray. But now everything is super modern. That's why it's so expensive. So 1890. Just about 130 years ago. So we could say it's a modern sport. Now that's in the past. That's right. And we have been looking at the future. Yes, looking very closely, haven't we, really? We have used future simple and future progressive so far. This week it's future perfect. Wow, perfect. That makes it sound really, really, really good. You can't get any better than perfect. Hmm, does it really mean very good? Well, not really. It's grammar. Can grammar ever be perfect? Not really. It's just the name that we give to this type of future tense. So, what is this used for? We are talking about a time in the future. And at that time, we will be looking at something we have finished. Whoa, what? Okay, let's use a timeline here. So here we are. This is now. This is when we are talking. The action we are going to talk about will finish sometime in the future. And after that, that is the time we are talking about. Hmm, okay. So we're talking about the future, but in that future, we would have finished something. Whew, well, I think it's better if we look at some examples, really. Hmm, think about it. This is how we form the sentence. When will have past participle. Oh, this is probably the most difficult bit of grammar we will look at. So don't worry. Hmm. That needs some more explanation and examples. So. Don't forget, it's the future perfect. 
when. This is the time that we are going to be talking about. Okay. Before next Friday. By seven o'clock this evening. Okay, so we've got a time there. Before next Friday, by seven o'clock this evening. What do we need to add? We'll have and the past participle. So this is what you are going to do before that time. You will have eaten. Okay. Will have eaten. Eaten is the past participle. Sometimes we call it verb number three. Oh, that looks good. We will have practiced. Okay. Let's see if we can make the sentence. Before next Friday, you will have eaten enough fruit. So we've got a when, will have, and past participle. By seven o'clock this evening, we will have practiced until we are perfect. So there we've got a when, will have, and past participle. By seven o'clock, will have practiced. Okay, there we go. It's not that difficult, is it? Now let's look at our sport. I had almost forgotten about that. Bobsled can be done with teams of two or four people. So what is it? A bullet shaped sled slides down a twisting and sloped track. Mm, very fast. Don't forget, it's really, really fast. The bullet shape helps to get as much speed as possible. Ah. Let's have a look at this sentence. I think this is future perfect. By the time you get to the finish line, you will have reached speeds of 120 kilometers per hour that is as fast as a train wow let's look at the sentence by the time you get to the finish line you will have reached speeds of 120 kilometers per hour that's future perfect. It is. That's right. Let's get back to the bobsled. Right. Now, this is a very small sled, but it shows us what he's doing very clearly. You start by pushing the sled as fast as you can. Then you jump in. So don't forget, the bobsled is usually for two or four people. This just shows us that he's pushing, running, and then he's got to jump in. Very difficult. That must take practice. Oh, I guess it does. Lots. Before getting to the track, your team will have perfected the sprint and jump. This is the most crucial time 
in the whole run. Can we see future perfect? We'll have perfected great. So this time, this very short amount of time is super important. Why? Why is it so important? This is the only time you can add speed to the sled. There we go. He's jumping on at just the right time. Will you have generated enough speed before jumping in? Whew. Right. Now that is a perfect, future perfect question. Here, the time is at the end, before jumping in. But we've got will have, and we've got generated as the past participle. Yeah, a future perfect question. Yeah, well spotted. We can also have future perfect negative. Okay. We will not have learned enough by the end of the lesson. So we've got all the different parts. We'll have learned end of the lesson. But now we've got not. So that makes it negative. Now we're in the sled. Do you just hold on now? Oh, I think that's what I would do. Hold on tight. All the way down the run, only the driver at the front has an important job. And the other guys, they really do just sit there. But they do have to be very still. So the driver, what does he do? The driver can steer the sled using two handles. It's a bit like steering a bike. He has to keep the sled away from the walls. So as they go down, the sled needs to keep in the middle of the track if the driver can do his job well. What if you hit the walls? Ooh, I don't think you want to hit anything at 120 kilometers per hour. Hitting the walls means that you will not have kept a high enough speed by the finishing line to win. There we have future perfect negative. You will not have. And then we've got the past participle kept. And then we've got the time by the finishing line. Okay. Is this future perfect becoming a bit clearer? So, in the sled, the others just sit there. Well, almost. But the man at the back has an important job right at the end. He is the brake man. He has to stop the sled. Well, that sounds like a very important job. Well, I think I do. I want to try. It is an expensive sport. Ooh. Before you even push the sled, you will have spent over $100,000. Whoa! Wow, okay. Maybe I 
don't really want to try. Not unless someone can give me $100,000. We've got Future Perfect there. Can you see it? Good. Whoosh, $100,000. Oh dear, oh dear. Both the sleds and the suits are scientifically designed. They are aerodynamic. They cut through the air. They cut through the air and that makes it faster. So if you look at the man's blue helmet, that will push through the air really well. And the front of the sled, it's pointy to cut through the air and make that as fast as possible. Wow. I think we should watch it on TV first. Yep. That sounds like a much better idea. Yes. Watching it on TV, well, that will give you a really good idea how fast these guys go. Okay. Bobsled, what do you think? Do you want to try? Well, we have one more winter sport next week. Maybe it will be cheaper. I think it has to be cheaper. Bobsled, bobsleigh, has to be one of the most expensive sports. Maybe car racing would be more expensive. But I can't think of any more. Can you? Let's see. By this time next week, you will have thought about expensive sports. Hey, we had Future Perfect. Do you think you can do some more? We don't hear it very often, but it is really useful. And not that difficult? What do you think? Well, I hope we see you soon to find out what our final winter sport will be. One more time, getting nice and cold. See you soon, everyone. Bye. Thank you for watching our video today. Please don't forget, subscribe, and that will help us to make lots more videos for you. Thank you. Bye.